Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be jumping back into our How Fast Can I Beat Pokemon Hard Gold slash Soul Silver with all of the legendaries and mythicals. In our last three runs, we did Suicune, Raikou, and Entei, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the box art legendaries, Lugia. Lugia has a very, very weird history. And if you want to know more about it, I highly recommend checking out this video. It explains the entire history of Lugia and it's one of the most interesting Pokemon videos I've ever watched. Lugia's base stat total is a whopping 680. That's a lot, but the most of its points are in special defense and normal defense. If you compare those stats to its special attacking stat, which is only 90, we can see that Lugia might even be worse than some of the legendary beasts because its attacking premise isn't as big. Of course, I doubt that Lugia will go down in many fights because of that 158 in special defense though. Before we get into the video, let's try to hit 4 likes for our boy Lugia. And also leave your prediction in the comments down below where you think Lugia will fit on this list. First, last, third, let me know. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Soul Silver with the fast Lugia. We jump into the game and name our character Lawrence the Third because that's the name of the villain that wants to capture Lugia in the movie. This was also one of the movies that I owned as a kid and I thought it was a very good masterpiece. I then pick my Lugia as my starter and name it Blue because in game Lugia actually has blue scales but if you look at its sprite they're black for some reason. This was definitely an oversight because Lugia used to have black scales in generation 3. We then meet up with our boy here and he says that we have a cute looking Pokemon. I mean if that's your definition of cute Totally fine by me. As we try to make our way to Professor Oak, we run into the Apricorn guy. I do think it's pretty weird that in any other Pokemon game there are no Apricorns and they're basically only in the Johto region. On our way back we run into our rival and here I see that Lugia only has Weather Ball as an attacking move. Also his starter is Chikorita while I meant to give him Totodile, but it just didn't go through. I tried to reset a couple of times but it always became a Chikorita for some reason. Anyway. After defeating the Chikorita with some weather balls, I go back to the lab and give my rival his name and it's going to be Momo. If you guys get the reference, that would be pretty epic. I then make my way to Sprout Tower but because my weather ball only has 10 PP and I can only 2 slash 3 shots the bell sprouts there, that meant that I had to go back to the Pokemon Center a couple of times and this took a big blow on Lugia's time. At least a couple of minutes and in this series a couple of minutes can make or break it. Eventually though I was able to go to the top of the tower, my Lugia at this point has learned Gust and after defeating the bald monk our character turns into a black square. After these game breaking glitches we can finally move on to the first gym leader Faulkner which we reach at a time of 33 minutes. Lugia manages to two shot his Pidgey but his Pidgeotto is a little bit more bulky and because of Roost this thing took a very long time to take down so I just kept on spamming Gust until it eventually died but before that he was able to almost kill me too. So I leave the battle with only 5 HP, but after that I get my first gym badge and the TM for Roost, which is going to be super useful on Lugia. So that's the first TM I decide to give to Lugia. After that we go and save the Slowpoke from Prodon, and I think he is definitely the coolest looking executive. What's your opinion on that? Let me know in the comments. We then go to Buxy, which is our first real obstacle in this entire run. And the reason is because of, of course, her Scyther, because her other two Pokemon are literally useless. Scyther loves to set up with Focus Energy and then go for Leers to lower my Lugia's defense and then go for U-Turn slash Quick Attack. Depending on how many Leers that he uses, he can easily two-shot me with his U-Turns. Besides that, she can also use a Super Potion on Scyther if she wants to, but most of the time she uses it on Metapod of Kakuna because the Scyther loves to U-Turn out. The Kakuna can also sometimes poison me with Poison Sting if I get really unlucky, but after only like 12 to 15 attempts, I was able to beat up Bugsy. 
So of course, Bugsy starts off with his Scyther, I go for the Gust, and he then U-turns into Metapod. I then Gust it once, but it doesn't quite take it out, and he decides to waste a Super Potion on it, I go for another Gust, get a high roll, and take it down. So he then switches into Scyther again, I go for another Gust, but his Orenberry kicks in, and then U-turns into Kakuna, which I manage to kill really quickly as well with some Gusts. After that, Lugia decides to learn Dragon Rush, and I immediately get rid of Whirlwind. Scyther comes back out, and because I roosted up on the Kakuna, I can now take it down with two more Gusts. This gives us our second gym badge, which means that the next opponent that we have to face is Momo. This battle went a lot smoother than Bugsy, because I could one-shot Ghastly with Dragon Rush. Zubat manages to hang on from a Dragon Rush with 1 HP, so I have to finish it off with a Gust after. And finally is Bayleaf. This Bayleaf decides to poison me with the Poison Powder, I then keep on gusting away, and once I get down into a little bit of a low HP range, I just roost up. It also loves to use Synthesis, so if I get it down into red health, it just gets it all back. Just like I love to do with Roost. So once it ran out of its synthesis, I was easily able to finish it off with a couple more gusts. After the battle, we find a woman that's lost in the forest. That reminds me of like the opening of a horror movie. Luckily, nothing of the sorts happens here. We then reach the radio tower to do the radio tower quiz, and I don't even have to look at the questions anymore. I already know the order of what I have to click. But before we take on Whitney, I have to go to the department store to pick up myself the Blizzard and Thunder TMs. I decide to not learn them to my Lugia yet and go into the Whitney fight straight away. And while my Lugia is pretty damn stally, Whitney's mill tank is even worse. I can barely do any damage to it with Dragon Rushes or Gusts, and it does a lot of damage with Stomp, and if it starts going on a rollout rampage, I'm basically screwed. It also doesn't help that Stomp flinches me like 90% of the time for some reason. Like, how does a cow even outspeed a legendary bird? And so after a couple of attempts, I decided to learn Blizzard to Lugia and get rid of Weather Ball, because this mill tank does not have thick fat. Even with Blizzard, we still lost a couple of times, but it didn't take that long before we got the winning run. And so I just Dragon Rushed the Clefairy twice to take it down rather quickly, then Miltank came out. So I started Dragon Rushing away until I ran out of Dragon Rushes. I also roosted up once because I was really close to dying. Then after my Dragon Rushes ran out, she healed up and I went for 4 Blizzards to take down Miltank. With that, we have acquired our third Gym Badge. Which does mean that we can move on to the Burn Tower to fight Momo again. But his team was pretty much a pushover, starting off with his first Pokemon Ghastly, which I take down with two Gusts. Next up on the list is Magnemite. And while I don't really have any good moves for Magnemite, I can still take it down with three Dragon Rushes. Zubat then decides to confuse me, I hit myself a couple of times in my confusion, but eventually I do take it down. Last up is Bayleaf, so I go for the Blizzard, manage to get a freeze off, and then finish it off with Gust, and just like that we have defeated another rival battle. We then meet up with our last three team members, the three doggos, and we move on to the next gym leader, Morty. But at this point, my Lugia has learned his first psychic stab move, Extra Sensory, and so I was easily able to sweep his Ghastly, Haunter, Gengar, and then another Haunter with only Extra Sensories. The only one that really survived the hit was the Gengar but it didn't really threaten me in any way. So Morty's gym badge was definitely the easiest up until this point, while I thought that it was gonna be pretty hard because of ghost types being super effective against my Lugia. So after that I go ahead and pick up the HM for Surf down at the Kimono Girls Dojo. I then make my way all the way to the lighthouse to see how sick the Ampharos really is. And it's not looking too great and I don't know why she just doesn't take him to a Pokemon Cinder. No, I have to go and get a secret potion. After that, there is a Krabby on the beach that I have to capture because I need something with Surf. I then make my way to Cyanwood City and fight Chuck at a time of 2 hours and 3 minutes. So we're looking pretty decent on time right now. But as you may expect, this gym was pretty easy because the first Pokemon Primeape did give me some troubles, almost taking me down, but after I took it down, I just went for a Roost once he set out his Polyrath and then I extra sensory that until it fainted. So I would say that it was probably the second easiest gym battle after Morty. So that gives us our fifth gym badge, I go back to the lighthouse to give the Ampharos its secret potion, and then I move on to the sixth gym leader, Jasmine. And she has two Magnemites and a Steelix, and the Magnemites love the Thunder Wave me, and then just kill me with Thunderbolt, because I don't really have any moves against it at this point. 
so I decided to replace Blizzard for Surf. But I am going to have to get Blizzard back for the Lance fight because otherwise I don't think I'm gonna be able to beat up his Dragonites. Even after learning Surf to my Lugia, it still wasn't easy to take down the Magnemites without getting paralyzed or killed by Thunderbolts and get to the Steelix unharmed, but this one time I was able to do it. The Magnemites just would not go for Thunder Wave, and I literally took no damage from them, so Steelix was an easy two-shot with Surf after that. So with a lot of luck, I was able to beat the 6th Gym Leader as well, which means that we can move on to Price, but before we move on to Price, we have to do the Lake of Rage first. So Lance obliterates this guy with a Hyper Beam, we then easily manage to sweep our way through the hideout, go up to the electrodes, make the whole thing explode, and make our way up to Price. At a time of 2 hours and 50 minutes. And normally I thought that Price was going to be a big problem because of course Ice Typing versus my Flying Type is not really going to work out too well, but it wasn't too difficult because on my second attempt I was easily able to sweep him. I was easily able to 3-shot the seal after it had used a rest to heal up with extra sensory. Jugong took a little bit more, he took 5 extra sensories because he also decided to use a rest, but of course Jugong is more bulky than seal, but our extra sensories did put in the work. Then we went to the final Pokemon, Pile of Swine, and two serves easily took down the Swine. And that gives us our 7th Gym Badge very easily. We then do the entire Radio Tower shenanigans, go to the basement, and start a battle with Momo. He starts off with Golbat, which I of course one shot with extra sensory, then his hardest Pokemon for me to take down comes out, which is Sneasel. And this Sneasel outspeeds my Lugia and is able to hit two faint attacks, which makes me go into the red, but luckily a Surf and a Dragon Rush can finish it off. Magnemite then comes out, so I roost up for First to get some HP back, then I get paralyzed and confused, but luckily I don't miss any of my moves and I can take it down with two surfs. Hunter then comes out and he is able to hit a shadow ball on me because I got hit in my confusion, but then an extra sensory can take it down, and last up is Meganium. I start off by getting paralyzed a bunch of times and also hit myself with my confusion once. After that, he decides to go for pedal dances, but that barely does any damage, so eventually I'm able to roost up and take it down with a couple more extra sensories to win another rival battle. And if I didn't have Surf here, I also would have learned the Hydro Pump to my Lugia, but because we already have Surf, I decided to pass up on it. We then go ahead and beat up Archie and also get ourselves the Silver Wing from the Radio Director. We then make our way through the Icy Path and reach Blackthorn City to go ahead and challenge Claire as our final gym leader. And Claire always is the hardest gym leader. No matter what Pokemon I have, Claire always gives me the most troubles. And this is also the reason why I kept Dragon Rush on my Lugia, just for this Kingdra, because it's the only thing that's going to be able to do super effective damage against it. But I didn't calculate in that the Gyarados also gives me an attack drop at the start of the fight, so my Dragon Rush is naturally gonna do less damage. Then of course the Kingdra is a really big opponent here because of Dragon Pulse, Hyper Beam, Hydro Pump and stuff like that. It also has Smoke Screen, so if it starts setting up Smoke Screens, my Lugia is not gonna hit a single Dragon Rush. But not only Kingdra is annoying, her two Dragonairs are very annoying as well, as they always paralyze me with Thunder Wave. Luckily, my Lugia did keep Roost, so I could always heal up if I really had to. And so, after about half an hour of attempting this battle, I was eventually able to beat up Claire. I got pretty lucky on Gyarados because I used two Dragon Rushes and then the third one was a critical hit which took it down. Which means that I can go into the first Dragonair with a decent amount of health. The Dragonair then comes out and it decides to paralyze me and I decide to go for some extra sensories to try and reserve those Dragon Rushes. Eventually though, I was able to take it down with two extra sensories and then the next Dragonair came in and I start off by using a Roost to get some HP back. Two more extra sensories and that Dragonair is down as well and then we can move on to the final Pokemon Kingdra. And for some reason I just did not go for Dragon Rush, I just kept on spamming extra sensory and that also worked, it did about the same amount of damage as Dragon Rush. And luckily the Kingdra could never do enough damage to actually one shot my Lugia after I used the Roost and so eventually after spamming and that thing spamming Hyper Beam, Smoke Screen and Dragon Pulse and all that, I was able to win my final gym badge too. 
Of course, she does not give us the badge, so we have to go to the dragon's den to go ahead and lie our ass off against this old man. After that, he orders her to give us the badge. After we get the badge, we have to do one more thing, and that is go to the kimono girls. So we then go to the kimono girls, and I actually get destroyed by the Jolteon one. Because by that point, my Lugia is a little bit damaged, and roosting up does not give me more health than if it hits me with a thunderbolt. Eventually my RNG log did pull through and I was able to beat the Jolteon and the rest of the Kimono Girls as well. With that we can go to the Whirl Islands. After doing so I was debating capturing this Lugia because it's a higher level, maybe it would have a better nature too, but I decided to leave it alone. After that we finally reached the end of Victory Road where we have to battle Momo one final time before we can take on the Elite Four. Our boy here leads off with a Sneasel which I two shot with Surfs, which is pretty good because normally this Sneasel can do some decent damage with Fane attacks. He then goes into Magneton which also can give me a bunch of troubles but I get a critical hit with Surf taking it down in one shot as well. Hunter then comes out which also gets one shotted by an extra sensory, Golbat shares the same fate, and his last two Pokemon Meganium and Kadabra both get obliterated by Aeroblasts. So now we go into the final portion of the game starting off with the first Elite Four member, Will with the Psychic types. Will starts off with a Zatu, so I go for the Aeroblast which takes him down to red health but he then U-turns into Jinx. This Jinx is actually pretty bulky in special defense because my serves actually take 3 hits to take it down. Of course after hitting it with 2 serves he heals up and does some decent damage with ice punches but 3 more serves take it out. Zatu is back and this thing of course gets destroyed by another surf. Another Zatu comes out so I decide to roost up as it hits me with an ominous wind. I then go for 2 more serves to take it down, Exeggutor comes out which is of course an easy one shot with Aeroblast and then the final Pokemon that he has is Slowbro. So I go for the Aeroblast and it does more than half but he sets up a Columnime, I think that another one might take it out but it sadly enough doesn't and of course he heals up. Since I only have one more Aeroblast left I decide to go for some extra sensories, luckily one of them was a critical hit which made the Slowbro take a lot of damage. Then I switch between Surf and Extra Sensory until the Slowbro eventually feign it. With that we can move on to the second Elite Four member Koga and his poison types. This was basically just a one shot sweep with Extra Sensory except for Fortress so we one shot the Ariados, two shot the Fortress with Surf. I thought that Muck was going to survive an Extra Sensory so I went for a Surf then an Extra Sensory to take it down. And his last two Pokemon, Crobat and Venomoth, were both one-shots with extra sensory as well. Which means that we can already move on to Bruno. Bruno's team was very easy, starting off with Hitmontop, one-shotting that thing with extra sensory. Onyx goes down to a Surf. Hitmonchan goes down to an extra sensory. Matchamp actually survives an extra sensory, but isn't able to deal any significant damage back to me, so one more takes it down. And the last Pokemon on the list is Hitmonlee, which I also one-shot, and that's Bruno out of the way. So one more Elite Four member before we can face Lance, and that's, of course, Karen. Now you might think that Karen was actually hard because she's Dark-type and I'm Psychic-type. Well, she actually wasn't hard at all. And so, of course, Karen starts off with her favorite Pokemon, Umbreon, which we two-shot with Surf, then finish off with Aeroblast, while only taking a little bit of damage from some Fane attacks. Gengar is up next and that was the dumbest thing she could have sent out so an extra sensory is going to easily sweep that thing. Murkrow then comes out so I go for a couple of surfs to take that thing down and then Houndoom is next. Of course also going down to some surfs and finally Vileplume, one Aeroblast and we easily defeated Karen. So let's move on to the final one, Lance. Before I fought Lance I actually decided to learn Thunder and Blizzard to my Lugia because those two moves are going to be crucial against his Gyarados and the rest of his team. After my Lugia learned those two moves I was easily able to one shot Gyarados with Thunder, one shot Aerodactyl with Thunder as well. His first Dragonite goes down to a Blizzard, his second Dragonite also goes down to a Blizzard. Then Charizard comes out and I of course miss my Thunder. He hits a critical hit Shadow Claw so I decide to roost up. Then a normal Shadow Claw basically does no damage. But I miss another Thunder and because Shadow Claw is a high critting move I decide to roost up again so I don't faint. I then hit a Thunder but it doesn't even one shot the Charizard and he decides to use a full restore as I roost up again and then finish off Charizard with two more serves. Then his last Pokemon is of course another Dragonite, one more Blizzard and we have easily defeated Lance and just like that we have defeated 
Pokemon Hard Gold slash Soul Silver with our boy Lugia. But is he going to be the fastest? Let's see. Lugia came out of it with a time of 4 hours and 58 minutes, so that's just missing out on first place. So Lugia is second place. The reason why he's not first place is because I had to heal up a bunch with Roost and I wasn't really able to sweep really fast. And of course, me having to run back to the Pokemon Center because the Weather Ball was the only move I really had also added to the time. So if that wasn't the case, then Lugia probably would have been first. We only have two more Pokemon to go, those are Ho-Oh and Celebi. And I personally think that Ho-Oh is probably going to be the fastest, but let me know in the comments down below who you think is going to win this tournament. Of course, before we end off the video, I want to thank my Patreon and membership supporters. If you want to support me, you can click the links in the description, it's always appreciated. Also, if you are interested in watching Pokemon Challenges live, I am currently streaming on Twitch Pokemon Omega Ruby without gaining any experience, so you can follow me over there if you're interested. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.